Hey everyone, this is Susan Campfield with SueStampfield.com. Thanks so much for joining me tonight for our Tuesday tutorial. Tonight's card is a fun one. We're going to kind of get artsy and creative and messy, which is always fun. Uh, making an embossing paste watercolor ombre card. So I'm super excited to share this one with you. Um, this is one that um, uh, is uh, one of my technique class. The technique class closed two weeks ago and those projects, those packets are just about to be mailed out hopefully tomorrow um, to all of the participants. So I'm excited to share this card with you and let's go ahead and get started. Thanks so much for tuning in. I'm going to flip the camera. Hey from Florida, Nancy, thanks for tuning in. I'm going to flip the camera around. Hey Roz, how are you? Deb's here. Awesome. I'm going to just slide my stand over just a bit here so that we can all see. All right, hopefully that light is good. And so uh, this is the card that I'm going to be making tonight. Um, this was inspired by a demonstrator from Australia whose name is Gail Ellis. And she had done one in some different colors, and I just thought it was really, really pretty. And so um, we're going to use embossing paste here. And you can't see this on the camera, but maybe if I tilt it, can you see um, how it's raised up there, uh, that detail? Um, it is, when you touch it, it is actually physically raised up so it gives the card a lot of depth and it is on watercolor paper and then we're going to do this fun ombre watercoloring to the card so uh, inside the card it says together we can get through anything which I thought was perfect for what's going on in the world right now and then inside sending hugs so um, let's go ahead and get started here um, we're going to start by um, getting messy um, I'm going to take the precaution here of uh, I'm going to put my sample in a clear these are the Stampin' Up! clear envelopes I love these for protecting my projects um, and so I'm just going to, like I said, we're getting messy tonight so I'm going to put my sample in here so that I don't inadvertently get it all messy hey Vicki, thanks for tuning in and then I'm going to protect my work surface before I get started you could use paper, I mean you could use whatever you want I happen to have some Glad Press and Seal um, in my office here for um, some other craft projects, so, um, boy, that's loud, sorry, golly, I didn't realize that was so loud, so I'm just going to protect my work surface with that, because it's here, it's on hand, and, um, why not, right, I want to use what I've got, so I'm just going to put that down on my desk, it is a little tacky, um, so that's good, a little bit, um, I don't want to say sticky, but kind of, it's like a temporary tack to it, so, um, that's just going to protect my work surface. So I'm going to start with a piece of watercolor paper. Um, this is the, uh, whoops, I got it upside down. Good job, Sue. Uh, this is the Fluid 100 watercolor paper. This is really thick, high quality, really excellent watercolor paper. And you will see what I mean because we're going to be able to really get um, get a lot of water on this, which is what we want to do for this project. So, but we're going to actually start with the embossing paste portion of the project. So I have some embossing paste here. Um, this is just the regular embossing paste. And then I have a um, embossing paste mask. So this one comes from a set of masks. And I'm just going to grab the name here really quick. Um, it's the Basic Pattern Decorative Masks. It comes with some birch trees, um, uh, this fun, I don't know, what would we call this? Would you call this like a, uh, hmm, I want to say paisley, but that's not quite right. Um, I'm not really sure what we call that. A fleur de lis maybe? Um, type of pattern. Reminds me of kind of a Victorian um, water, uh, uh, wallpaper. Um, this is the... Um, one of the other stencils in the pack, that's the the trees. Um, it also comes with these polka dots. Move those so you can see. And then this other random pattern, which would also be really cool on this project. Actually, any of these would be cool on this project. Maybe not the trees for this little of a piece. You'd want a bigger piece. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and lay my mask down. You know, you can either do it this way or this way. It just... Um, 
totally up to you. And then I actually want to tack um, this down because I, I want it to stay in place. You can also tack your paper down if you want. My Actually, this slightly tacky um, cling wrap is going to do that for me, I believe. <laughs> we'll find out. Um, when I did this for the class, I actually kept the piece whole. And I did the whole piece and then I cut it apart. It was just faster because I was doing 30 of them. So, um, but for this video, I'm just doing, you know, the single size. So this is a one and seven eighths by five inch piece of watercolor paper. I am taking some washi tape. Hey, Lori. Hey, Sandy. And this washi tape comes, it's the, the roll that comes with the flower petals. If you're familiar with that washi tape, which is retiring. And um, I use a lot of the flower petals. I use some of this, but not as much. So it's one I have extra of. Um, I'm loving washi tape right now for sealing the envelopes when I mail things because uh, with the, the concerns about the virus, I don't want to be licking the envelope. And I could use an aqua painter or a paintbrush to seal it, but then the recipient's not going to know I did that um, unless I, I note that. And um, we can do that with our new PDF. It's even got a, a, a saying about that. But um, i just been using the washi tape to seal, but it also works great for for holding down the mask. So we're gonna open up our embossing paste here and you'll see it inside there. I've actually had this jar um, oh, for well over a year. Um, it was still sealed with the foil on it. Um, you do need to be careful they don't dry out. So you wanna put your, um, put your uh, lid on as quickly as possible and as tightly as possible. Um, and if you're going to be storing it for a very long time, you might even want to take the precautionary of sliding it into a paper bag, or excuse me, a plastic bag and sealing it like a Ziploc. If it does dry out, um, you can just add some water to reactivate it. So I've got paste on here. I've actually got probably more than I even need um, because this is just uh, the smaller piece. And then you're just going to be, oh, I got a little piece of ribbon on there. Huh, look at that. Um, this is one of the knives that come in the pack. There's uh, three different knives that come in the pack. And quite frankly, any of them would work. This is the one that I used for all of mine. And so as you can see, I'm just, it's a little bit like frosting a cake except for I want that paste to go down into the grooves of the mask, um, but I don't, I'm just gonna scrape the excess off the top because I don't want it so thick that I can't uh, fit my card in the envelope, right? I want, um, I want the dimension there, so I'm scraping off the coating that's on the top of the mask, and then I'm just looking to where I have some sort of, um, where I haven't completely filled into the groove parts and just adding some more in. Um, that looks pretty good to me right there. And so we're gonna just take a, I'm just gonna grab a paper towel here, a little piece of paper towel. First, I'm gonna scrape this excess right back into the jar. Waste not want that, right? Um, so just get that, scrape that in, and then let's tighten that back up. And this is, it's, it's a, sometimes it's fun to just get, especially right now when we, a lot of people have some extra time, it's fun to, to experiment with these things that take um, a little more time. And it takes a little more time, not that it's hard, but just that um, it needs to dry overnight. So, um, so this is a good one for patients. So you can kind of split it apart into where you work, um, you know, put the, the paste on and let it dry overnight. So now we're gonna peel that up and you can see that it's um, filled in. It made that pretty filigree. I'm going to call it a filigree pattern just because I can. <laughs> and um, we're going to peel these off. Now, when you, uh, when you peel off your mask, you're wanna, going to want to clean that off pretty much right away. Once the paste dries on the mask, it can be hard to get off. So if you wash it right away, that is best. And um, it's okay to have a little bit of residue in those open spots. Um, less is better. Um, if you have some that dries on there and you can't get it off, um, use some Goo Gone and a soft brush and gently scrub that off. So I'm gonna set that aside and then we would put this aside to dry and preferably um, overnight, although I think I had some that I just let them dry for a few hours. 
and um, we just want that dry so that we get like paper. So I'm gonna set that aside. I have a piece here that I have already dried. Oops, all that really loud again. Sorry about that. Um, so I'm going to continue to get messy. So we're gonna put down, what the heck, let's put down some more of this stuff. It kind of worked pretty well. So, um, cause we're gonna, we're gonna watercolor now. So once your piece is dried, Let's bring a dried piece in here. I've got a couple here. Uh, once your piece is dried, um, you're going to take it and, I don't know, this is going to shift on me a little bit. not sure how this will work, but we'll give it a go. Um, and then you're going to add some water to it. Just plain clear water. I have a big paintbrush here. Um, if you have an aqua painter, you can certainly use that. Um, I actually liked it better with just a paintbrush. The aqua painter, you only get a small amount of water and you want a lot. Can you see how much water... I am really puddling it on here. Um, that is a really good question, Karen. Karen asked if I could dry the embossing paste with a heat tool. I don't know why not. I didn't try it, so um, I can't fully answer that, but it seems like a very logical um, plan. So I've got my paper super coated, and I'm going to take um, some old lids that I have here, just little plastic lids, and this is going to be my paint palette here. And I'm going to add some drops of reinker to those. Now I um, I already have plenty in here, so I'm not even going to add any more. But I can tell you that I used balmy blue, I used blueberry bushel, which is about to retire, and I used um, gorgeous grape for the um, the purple. So. These are very intense colors. I don't want my color that intense. I want my color to be soft and muted, right? So I'm gonna add, take my paintbrush into the jar here and I'm gonna add some water to that balmy blue. And I can you see how I'm sort of thinning that out? I'm making it less of an intense color. And now I'm going to go to my project here and I'm just gonna dab on that color I maybe would have been better off just putting this on a paper towel. And I'm dabbing it because I get a little more intense color if I dab versus if I stroke it. If I brush it, it gets pretty light. So you can kind of play around with that, but that's the lightest, that we want a nice light color like that. So I'm gonna set that one aside. I'm gonna dip my brush into my jar here, kind of clean that off a little bit. And now I'm gonna to go to the blueberry bushel and same thing, um, if I use this right here where I have the intense drops, that's gonna be way too dark. I wanna add water to that to make it a lighter color. And then I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna dab that on. And that's kind of the middle portion of my ombre, if that makes sense. Isn't that gorgeous? It's just, I don't know if you can, if it's coming through on camera as pretty as it is, but it's so pretty here. And then I'm going to, yeah, Karen, um, try it, try it and report back. Please let us know if it works. Um, so I've got my paintbrush loaded up with water again. Now I'm going to go to that gorgeous grape. Same thing. I'm thinning out that color. If you feel like you got it too intense, um, it's really a good idea to have some paper towel handy. You can dab it off before you even go onto your paper, but you also, if you put it on there and you're like, whoa, that's too loud, you can go in with the paper towel immediately and um, you know, pick up a lot of that color before it, while it's all pooled up like this and, and it'll be just fine. So there we've got our, our ombre going. I'm gonna clean my brush once again. And you actually then can go back in you want to clean it really well for this step. So I'm just dipping it in here in this little baby food jar. Um, you want to make sure there's not a lot of color left on there. And then um, you can go back in if you want to kind of, if you feel like there's too harsh of a line there, you can just kind of go over that, dab it a little bit, and blend it. So that's that's it right there. That is is done now. And again, we're going to set that aside to dry. And again, I have one that's already dried so that I can show you how to put the card together. Um, but I also have some other color combos to share with you. Um, just a couple of them because there's, you know, with ombre, there's just a ton of different options here that you can do. So I'm just going to uh, pop this right on here and set this aside to dry. I'm just gonna go ahead and scoop off this plastic. Pop that down here. Take my paintbrush, pop 
pop it in there, all done. Okay, so now we can pull in, um, so this was our card here, and let's find our parts and pieces. So the dies that I'm using right here, um, you know what, I'm going to be super lazy tonight. I'm not even going to cut them on camera. So um, these are the ornate frame dies. They were in last fall's holiday catalog. They carried over. And I believe they are carrying over to the new catalog. And then in the mini catalog, they came out with a new stamp set that matches them. This stamp set is not carrying over. So if you have these dies, um, you may want to consider picking this up before it's gone. I don't think it's sold out yet. Um, so we're using, that's where we got this phrase, together we can get through anything. And then the sending hugs. And that just match up with the different dies. So I actually have one already stamped here. I used Highland Heather. Now you might say, well, wait a minute, Susan, when you did the, um, that purple, that was the gorgeous grape. And you're absolutely right. It was the gorgeous grape. Um, however, when you watercolor it, it becomes, you know, remember how we, we added water to kind of thin that out. It becomes a lighter color and you get some really cool sort of bleeding effects here where sometimes the purple will travel up in there. Every one of these is going to look different and that is super cool. That's art, right? You're going to get a different look every single time. And it's kind of a batik look is what it reminds me of, like batik fabric. Um, so Let's go ahead and put our card together here. Um, actually have uh, got two here. This one has, I think, here, I'll use this one. You can see it's got a little more of the purple that just kind of traveled up there. Or probably when I was dabbing with my brush to blend the different lines, I had a little purple on there. So I, I like that. That's cool. All right, so I've cheated and I've got my die cuts already done. So we're just going to use those. So I'm going to take some dimensionals. You know, I love my dimensionals. And I'm going to pop up this sentiment. Now, if you didn't want to use this particular sentiment, I do have a couple of other options that I can share with you here. Now, these other two options are from the PDF that's available for $12. This is a fundraiser. They're two different organizations and you get to choose which one to donate to. 100% of the proceeds go to the organization directly. This is a PDF download and um, you just print it out on your home computer on white and um, and then you, they, it's got a whole, well here, let me show you. And these are all uh, to do with the pandemic right now. So these are just kind of some different fun uh, greetings like the um, the quarantini that I demonstrated last week that came out of this um, this uh, uh, PDF. So um, great cause and it's really handy right now. So these are two that I use the same die cut on. Uh, just feeling the need to reach out and hug someone and then hug is crossed out, send a card to. So you can see that that would just go right there or maybe it'd be better if I just show you on the sample that that would just go right on there. And um, and then this one, actually, when you print it out, this one was already um, in purple. Everything will be okay. We can't just can't see what okay looks like from here. So both of those would be really fun options, but we're gonna do that together. We can get through anything. So I just have my card base here. This is um, uh, eight and a half by five and a half. And I've just got it scored at four and a quarter, typical card base in Whisper White. And we're just going to crease that, get that nice and flat. And then I'm going to add this, but I'm also going to add a layer of white. It's just going to make that pop out um, a little bit more. So this piece is a two by five and a quarter. And then I'll be layering this piece, which is five by um, one and seven eighths. So I'm sorry, this piece is two and an eighth. My mistake. So two and an eighth by five and a quarter. And we're going to go ahead and just adhere that with some snail. Now snail adhesive is retiring. Um, I don't know if that's sold out or not. There is a new adhesive option that will be in the new catalog. Um, so right now there's some great deals on the retired list. Make sure you check that out. Um, uh, things are, are disappearing quickly, um, but there's still some awesome deals on there. And then the new catalog goes live on June 3rd. And just, um, just today, 
<laughs> it was so long ago, I can't remember because I got up really early. Just today, demonstrators got to pre-order some of the selected items from the new catalog. This is always a very exciting day in the demonstrator world, as many of you know who are demonstrators or have been in the past. Um, and so, uh, yeah, I was up at 3.30 and uh, online and ordering at that same time. So, so there we've got that adhered down, and that white layer just gives it a, a nice border, very subtle, white on white. I love white on white. And then we have our fun greeting, but we're going to add some of the silver thread in here. Uh, silver thread, that may be retiring, actually. Um, so I have a piece of silver thread here. I cut this at 18 inches, and I'm just going to go to the back of my uh, piece here, and I'm going to just kind of slather it with adhesive with some snail. And this is... Um, if, if sometimes when you do things, they come out messy, this is the technique for you because this actually looks better if it's kind of wadded up and shoved on there. If your loops are too even and too regular, it looks weird. <laughs> so this is one where messy, messy is good. You want to just squish it on there and just have little blobs sort of squeezing out and it's just really, you know, we're just messy tonight, aren't we? It's great. It's awesome. Um... That's what art is supposed to be, right? So I've just got that. You can see how I just kind of smashed it on there, and I just have these sort of loop-de-loos coming out um, every which way, and I, I don't. I want them to like overlap and stuff. I don't want these. I'm so used to having things perfectly even that I have to watch myself with the steps so that I do it right. Um, and then I'm just going to adhere that right onto the card. And then we're going to add, and I want to push it down there good because I've got lots of lumpy stuff I'm going on here. And then you can even add a couple glue dots behind there if you want, um, just to make sure it sticks well. And then, we're, of course, we're going to add some embellishments here. We're just going to add our good old basic rhinestones, just one of those core awesome ways to just add that final touch to your card. can never have too many of these babies. There you of course, I'm using my take your pick tool to, to pop these up and position them uh, where I want them. And there we have our card. Let's just put that little, that cute little sending hugs inside. Now there is a really pretty frame for this one too that you could certainly add to the inside if you want. Yeah, these ornate dies are just gorgeous with the, um, these ornate frames with that uh, curly Q edge on them. So. There we have our card. Um, so don't be intimidated by your embossing paste and your masks. Play with it. It's really fun. Oh, I promised I was going to show you other colors, didn't I? Let's see where Susan put them. Hmm. Aha, found them. So this one I did with some other blues. So this is Pool Party, Bermuda Bay. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Uh... <laughs> I don't remember. I think it was Coastal Cabana. That's what that middle one looks like. Bermuda Bay and then Pool Party on the top. This one was much more intense. You could also get a softer look by again adding more water. And then this one is, is uh, more like the colors I saw on Gail Ellis's original one, which is Daffodil Delight, Pumpkin Pie, and uh, Melon Mambo for just a, a different look. So all sorts of color combinations that you could play with. Now, if you don't have embossing paste um, and the masks, but you have some watercolor paper, you can do the same effect, but just with the watercolor paper, just load it up with water, add your um, re-inkers on there and get that ombre look. And you can even stamp on this and die cut out some pretty flowers and things, um, all sorts of fun things you can do with this um, pretty watercolor paper and get that nice variegated color. So I'm going to flip the camera here. Thanks so much for tuning in tonight. It was great to have you here while we walk through this fun project. Have a great evening, everyone, and we'll see you very, very soon because I have lots more to share. Bye-bye. Have a great night.